What's up, y'all? Today I'm with my friend Tay. We're gonna watch. Oh shit! Damn, it's so stupid. I haven't even started the video yet. Uh, Tay, you were provide something. Let me find a video. <laughs> I, I think I want I want to watch and talk about this because like, um, Russell Brand kind of represents the idea that I came from, like the ideas of like New Age and oneness and Buddhism, very right, like right. spiritual ideas, um, Eastern ideas, and Jordan Peterson like is has ideas where i think you but do i pass it that one this one yeah yeah turn oh. peace and come like I need to bring he's, he's like i'm going through a process of coming to god well, you know logical. yeah yeah so like there's like a dichotomy there that i think i'd like to explore because like it kind of like embodies what i'm going through yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, that's cool. How do I share audio? Share sound. That's, I forgot to press that last time for the video we were watching that we recorded everything. Oh. So there's no sound on it at all. Jeez. Hopefully it can hear. All right, so. Okay, cool. So we'll watch and we'll comment. I did this with Harry once, but this should be interesting. Hopefully, I remember to pause sometimes. Remind me if I forget. Or if you have something to say, just let me know. Yeah. Or you can pause it yourself because it's right yeah, here. Yeah, of course. All right, let's start. A war between parasites and hosts. We watch one more time. Oh, there you six points. They're too, like, intelligent for me. Like, I, I can't pick it up. Like, <laughs> I lose, like, so many big words. And, and they're just talking about, like, a simple thing. But, like, I understand, like, they're trying to, like, yeah. paint a full picture. Yeah. So that it's, like, hard to misunderstand. Right. But, like, it's a lot to, like, yeah, process. So... I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> I, need, nah, I, need to, million awakening I think it's also some of it is um familiarity with certain concepts too and yeah. certain paths of travel within your head. Yeah. And then certain ways of organizing information or putting information together and having a particular interpretive scheme to get yeah. at things. And if you don't have that, or if you have a different one and you're getting a new one, yeah, you have, it's almost like learning a new language. Yeah. So yeah, that's usually what's going on. Thanks for joining me for this special hour long exclusive conversation with jordan peterson available in full for the first time on youtube turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now to ensure that you're informed when we do these magnificent the trickster necessary and please enjoy this fantastic conversation for the first time available on youtube you know where they're available oh, yes, first. it's good to see you russell yeah. Mm. We're in a maelstrom. I see that you have adorned yourself in the accoutrements <laughs> of the Harlequin. Is the role of the trickster necessary and integral at a time where authority appears to be melting, authenticity seems to be in decline, and people appear to be demanding new systems and their faith in the old answers and systems appears to be waning? Are you unconsciously indicating something to us or very deliberately uh, indicating something to us you see i didn't catch what he said in the beginning but like second time around I right, right, right. but like you see what i mean he's like he, uh, he, he's so like he is stream of consciousness yeah talking plus the details yeah. like align so that like it, it's as if like he he thought out the things that he wanted to say and wrote it down and then Recurgitated it. It's probably it's, that's he probably thought it in his head before, or he mm. organized this information in his head, and now he's presenting it linearly. No, he talks like this. I've heard him talk, but I think he can improvise on the spot. But also, yeah. like I can also imagine that he's thought through these things multiple times too, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's easier for him to like draw for it. That's like, true. Present yeah. it, and he it's also like summarizing mm -hmm. uh, what he sees as going on because right now he's describing what's going on from authenticity, feigning, uh, and all these different things and stuff like that. In the full archetype and yeah. playing with that, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how much is play conscious and how much is it just something that automatically happens if you're conducting yourself properly. These crazy people at LGFG have made me all sorts of suits. And this one has a wooden tie, by the way, just so you know. That's and so it's supposed to be symbolic of the Native American art that I've been collecting. Um, these are like totem pole patches, essentially. And so... Uh, I don't know. They make me these crazy suits, Russell, and it turns out I like them, so I wear them, and it's fun, and that's a good thing, you know? 
JP, it's very curious that you have become over the last five, t ten years, one of the um, most, it, it appears, a divisive figures in our culture. Certainly that's how your icon and image is utilized. And yet it appears to me that in the numerous communities you are regarded as an elder. I feel like I've seen you talk about being called rabbi. I know that you have interesting relationships with uh, indigenous Canadian folk or in the territory now known as Canada. Do you think that what we're striving for is a kind of morality, a set of principles that is transcendent of the current cultural divisions that appear to be defining our time. Do we need to find something that akin to universalism to reorganize and reorientate our cultural conversations? Or are we in danger of arriving at a time of such enormous fragmentation and divisiveness that it, it almost makes it impossible to establish systems of governance and consensus? Well, that's interesting because um, when you said, I guess, arriving at a morality that's transcendent, I was like, are we arriving at it because we made it or are we arriving because it's already there? Well, you know, like, and you're like, try to summarize what he said because okay. I didn't graduate college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very bad at recalling and summarizing lately yeah. because my mind is really bad. So well, I'd have to well, how, What did you understand? I understood that he's talking about uh, that we need a sort of overarching morality moral structure mm -hmm. that helps us like certain rules that help us understand and do things in the world you know like it helps govern things right. situation because that's typically what people some people are after when they seek okay take it take what postmodernism postmodernism talks about points out that they're almost uh moralities are i guess for lack of a better word relative because they're culturally dependent right. they emerge from cultures they emerge from different people's experiences and so on so as a result you get a lot of plurality plurality mm -hmm. meaning many because there are many right. perspectives many types of people many right. types of groups right. in this country so there's this push for people sometimes want a sort of like one ring to rule them all or people will see one main way of things working it's kind of like i was talking to my friend judy today about uh category theory and mathematics and how i like category theory because it's like the patterns behind the patterns but you can say it's like the unity behind the multiplicity mm -hmm. or the context or context right, right. or the box that fits all boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, that's a paradox, but you know what I mean? Uh, but so that's what he's yeah, talking like about. a subset of a subset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like a, the set of all sets. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So that's what he's wondering about with the morality thing. And yeah. Mm. So I understood it as he's asking what should we do about the fact that there's like like an importance in the fractalization of yeah. like how people find it important to justify the individual perspective yeah and how they're like holding on to it like how everyone's like holding on to their their identity and not i don't know I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I mean, there's that feature there because just individually or even group wise, people are holding on to their identities. And there's also a sort of like instability where because like uh, the product of a country or an overarching country, because a country is like a larger context for different contexts yeah. and stuff. So it's like the product becomes unstable where by virtue of the context within the context, mm -hmm. not having unity or oh, cool. opposing each other or going in different directions or whatever, mm -hmm. you get a lot of instability, basically. Right, right. So like the larger subset that holds the individual subset, yeah. if that is becoming unstable, yeah. then the things inside it will find a hard time to stabilize. Like yeah, yeah, they'll find a hard time to get together. Right, right. Because it becomes like you get different modes of relationship. You get competition. Right. You get antagonism. You get uh, dominance and ruling. Mm -hmm. You get submission. Right. You get avoidance. Mm -hmm. You get, and then with well, then even while this is happening, you get different narratives that pop up from different people in right. these respective relationships where they may rightly or wrongly misunderstand the other mm -hmm. person. And so there's all these different things like go on. So right. there's a lot that he's saying right here. Right. Oh my God. It, that's a good question. Like he nails it. Like yeah. what's going on yeah. in our society. Yeah, but this is this this is something that's been going on, at least in Western society for a long yeah. time. Like yeah. Nietzsche 
like even Hegel, even Hegel like pointed this out during because yeah. Hegel, Hegel's the one that coined the death of God. Right. right. Like if God or like the ultimate principles, yeah, the ultimate subset yeah. is dead, yeah. How is it gonna contain all of the individual subset inside of it? Yeah. All the hierarchy. Yeah, lower level of relations. Yeah. You see. So yeah, that's that's some of the stuff that's going on. So these are just these are questions that anyone who honestly thinks or who perceives the world or is thinking about like should we should we seek unity or should we just do our own thing or should mm-hmm. we just be like Game of Thrones like whoever has the most power or right. which is it you know and these are these are arguments that people are having with each other and sometimes even having themselves where even in yourself you can see that where it's like if you don't have a ruling principle mm-hmm. like if you remember Matthew Pergo's book yeah, yeah. about the heaven the principle that rules the earth mm-hmm. so the earth is almost a pussy it's it's the richness it's the content. Mm-hmm. And the heaven can become the principle of the form that mm-hmm. contains the content, that makes yeah. the content intelligible and useful and stuff. So even in yourself, you can have multiple drives or emotions that pull you in different directions and yeah. want you to do different things. Yeah. So if you don't rule over it with a principle like a goal mm-hmm. or a form of life yeah. or a way of cultivation or habit, yeah. then you'll be pulled in different directions and mm-hmm. you'll, it'll be a waste of energy. Yeah. Or there'll be lots of internal conflict and confusion. And I think like it's important to one have that principle in your localized subset like yeah. in, in yourself yeah and i guess you need to kind of be like observant of what's going on in the outside world like like if a nation is falling or if god is dead yeah per se then you don't really need to panic just yet yeah maybe you can like find a localized principle that you can hold on to you can aim towards so that you yourself don't fall into chaos and ruins and the flood doesn't come. So, so in a localized sense, there is no flooding of the dry land. Yeah, it's kind of like what Jesus said, build your on the build foundation your ark. ark. My foundation, build your ark or yeah. build, build it on the foundation of my words. Yeah. It's not building it on sand. Yeah. Because storms will come, floods yeah. will come. So that's, and that's, if you think about it, that's kind of should be expected. Yeah, and that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Like, there is a flood in the outside world and we have to be like no yeah <laughs> and be like no ah uh. all right let's go <laughs> that's so lame well the alternative <laughs> to unity is all right this is even well the alternative to unity is conflict now unity can become so tight that it turns into tyranny yeah and obviously that's not acceptable but the the problem with the continual emphasis on diversity that we hear is that it isn't i also want to add that there's a unity push from lots of people lots of people want to unite things because they want harmony they want peace mm-hmm. but well, i used to think of unity because i inherited my notion of unity from christianity where we think of like people are the body of christ some people are legs some people are ears some people are hands we have different parts different organs different circulations mm-hmm. nervous systems all these different categories of activation that can be all interfacing interpenetrating intermodeling with each other to make up the body so it depends on i see unity like there are different types of unity there's like unity in either identity where it's like you both reflex and identify yourselves the same way mm-hmm. there's unity and function there's unity in uh proximity or place where you are there's unity in um how you what you share amongst each other like common things that you share with each other or you exchange with each other, whether it's language or money or whatever it is. So different ways that unity works. Mm. So sometimes you have to ask what type of unity, what's the case with this unity? And I came to the position where I, I guess a part of me almost wanted to take the world as it is, where I understood that, um, I guess I put it as we, I want a unity, no, not so much a unity, more like I want a, a set of modal relationships that allows there to be exchanging sharing competition cooperation in different measure where the overall structure can be formed Mm -hmm. and can develop and somewhat change in a gradual way and be iterative like it's it can evolve yeah there's a there's a mechanism inside that self-references itself and then tries to make changes over time. It's like introducing a little chaos yeah. into the order because too much unity, like you said, is tyranny and yeah. you're just like stuck in this. Yeah. There's no evolution, no. Yeah. And you need to introduce the unknown yeah. to try to make it better over time, right? Yeah. Mm. So there's that feature there. And there's also the feature of like 
think of your body like I think if I remember correctly, every seven years, all your cells are basically mm -hmm. recycled. Yeah, you lose all your cells, but it's like the form is maintained. Mm -hmm. But the man's form can also be like there can be different different changes in magnitude, uh, different change in quantity. Or you might gain weight, or you might lose weight and stuff. You might gain muscle mass, lose muscle mass. Your bones might become more brittle, stuff like that. So it's just like there's this expansion, contraction to the form too. And there's this exchange of the content or the cells that make up the form and stuff. So all that taking that into account and the form being situated in an ecology that supplies it with resources and supplies it with uh, things it can interface with to manipulate or ways it can contribute to it. Like this, like a bi-directional feedback thing where we benefit the ecology and the ecology benefits us. Right now we treat it as a, to quote Heidegger, a stand reserve where we're just like getting resources from it and using it for ourselves, mm -hmm. even though we're hurting it. And then when we make certain things and we're done using it, we just trash it. We just turn it into waste and we create lots of waste in different places and stuff. So I feel like there should be a better process for how we do this. And it starts, I think it starts with us asking what are we doing and how should we do it? And I don't think it should happen with just us um, freezing everything and just being like, um, the whole everything in the world should stop or everything in the world, let's destroy everything and rebuild. I right. think it should be more of like a, and on the go, on the way process where mm -hmm. it's like walk and talk. Like suppose the whole house was a mess and you were helping mm -hmm. me organize and we're like, okay, where do we start? Where do we start? It's like, let's just pick up some somewhere or as we go along, right. we'll address things. We'll keep things operational, but then we'll restructure as we're going along right. and then we'll shape the world out into a way that helps keep the house in order and yeah, helps well, it function that, well. That requires a, on a lower scope of relations, it requires a unity in a goal yeah like everyone needs to want this yes people like you got people on one side wanting absolute unity which yeah. is tyranny and you yeah. got people on the other side the left that wants chaos in a sense yeah i mean even even with the left it, some of it is not so much they want chaos some of the people More on like left, the left some of them they just extreme. they, they want to get rid of old hierarchies they either want to replace hierarchies or level everything and make everything at the same level Mm -hmm. so there's like an ethical dimension to it and i was talking to harry and this guy named memorist on this group i'm a part of i was telling him how like eth there's an ethical dimension the ethical ethics is more like a reality restructure where whenever you have an ethical project you almost have like a, a different way of attending to the world and attending to yourself or employing yourself even and manipulating yourself and manipulating the world towards certain end states or certain goals so there's a goal feature in ethics where by virtue of having certain values or principles, you'll act on you'll act in certain ways in the world. You act in certain ways with the world. You want the world to look a certain way compared to another way. So this feature naturally draws forth power because like right without might isn't affected. You can be right, but if you don't have the might, you can't affect it. You can't bring it about. Right. And if you have this might and you don't have right, you'll affect something that will not last, that can be overcome or overthrown, and then it'll throw things into chaos and waste mm -hmm. and dispersion, and you mm -hmm. get a lot of heat. You don't get any you don't get any forms. You don't get life that's able to evolve and inhale and exhale, contract and expand and develop. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes. And accompanied by the obvious fact that if people aren't united by a vision, let's say, yeah. which is how you unite people properly, then they're divided. And divided people can't cooperate or compete peacefully, and they the their interests run afoul of one another. Now, what's happening on the unity front, as far as I can tell, is that there is a clamor for unity, particularly on the side of the people who are fear-mongering with the apocalypse, and they're trying to compel a unity with terror. And to me, that's a hallmark of tyranny. I think tyrants always use fear to compel unity. What you need to do instead is to provide a unifying vision that people can adopt voluntarily. You know, and you said when you posed that question that I'm a divisive figure, but I actually don't think that's true, Russell. Like, I'm a divisive figure online, but it doesn't seem to be the case in the actual world because all the interactions I have with people in my actual life in public are they're uniformly highly positive. And so I don't think the online world is a very accurate simulacrum of the real world. In fact, I think it's dangerously demented in many ways, and it's giving us a false sense of reality. You know, it's a new sensory system, right? The whole the whole net and our new means of communication. Like, um, I guess the, this new sensory, this internet, it, 
it amplifies your words. So it's like a megaphone. Yeah. And people that want to amplify their words are usually narcissistic in nature. So the internet basically is a microphone for like the small minority of people who actually just want to like cause some effects, you know, like, like he talks about how like, um, people with the, the, the three traits of like, like the negative traits about narcissists yeah. are like the pre prevailing trolls on the internet. Yeah. And if you coming from the outside and you're looking at it, it's just like a cesspool of, you know, negativity and like yeah. all that, but that's not the unifying whole of the real world. You know, it's like, and people that actually like have like a righteous view, they don't speak up. They don't use that megaphone because it's not in their nature. So it actually distorts what the real world is and uh, in a sense makes them more demented. It's like, and normal people, when they look at it, they're like, oh, the world's fucked. But not really. It's just, it's just like, um, like a small minority projecting it out into the internet to make it look like. Mm. Yeah, there's that feature there too. Yeah. And I'd also say, um, like there are studies that show that anonymity makes people almost like throw away social graces yeah for throw sure. away etiquette you know, and stuff so there's that feature to things too and then there's also the feature of um it's also mm -hmm. hard to read people you don't actually know or you can't actually yeah. interface with and be present with yeah so there's this there's also this sense of while you're on a screen there's this distance that you naturally have mm -hmm. so it makes you uh, and that distance makes you come out more unfiltered mm -hmm. and like uh it almost draws you out of yourself, uh, I guess, I don't know how to put it, I guess more intensely, where it's like, when you're like, why are we watching this video? And I don't, I'm not talking to him in person. So I'm not as concerned with, I guess, balancing my understanding of him and critique of him right. with his humanity. Right. There's this sort of like, um, I'm not in front of him right now, so I can look at him as an object almost. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to be a bit more critical than right. I probably would be if he was right in front of me. Right. And that criticality, if I have certain emotions that are elicited by that, mm -hmm. whether it's negative or even positive, even, but typically sometimes right. in this case, usually it it heightens it's the biases you yeah. have. Yeah, it heightens it like, and heightens the expression. Because like when you're in person, you mediate it because yeah. you want, like, and in and, and many levels, people want to be liked by the other person. Or yeah. they, that's how you, you know, get your ideas across. Yeah. So you would like, you know, edit your words. Yeah. And also you would also try to prevent an unnecessary conflict. Yeah. So there's that feature there too. That's why everyone has a harsher critic online mm -hmm. than they would be in person or like in face-to-face -face interviews, unless they have like an agenda there's, and they're working for a company. Or there's something. less like incentive to be collaborative online Yeah. than it is in person. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting stuff. Communication. It's a whole new sensory and social system, and there's no reason to assume that it's actually providing a valid representation of the actual world, especially because it also seems to be highly gameable by narcissists and psychopaths, and that's not good. That's not So Bespoke Post, they just send you a cool ah, box every month. Whoa. The value of every box is at least not good. Plainly, it is being used used to leverage, engineer, and amplify division. There's no reason to imagine that part of the natural course of a free... I think the word division is probably not getting at what's going on. It's more like amplifying opposition. Because we're not naturally united, if you think about it. You're not naturally united to people you don't know. Yeah. You don't actually think about them. You're, not, you're just not considering them. Mm -hmm. You're just like there or you're neutral towards them. But it amplifies opposition, where once you become aware of someone, you're like, this person's like this, therefore I don't like them, or therefore they're stupid, or they're less enlightened, or they're less yeah. ethical, or less human, and so on. And there's no bridge to understand, there's no bridge to show care, there's no bridge mm -hmm. to figure out the structure of the conversation. Like I made a video recently, I, th I think I sent it to you about, 
uh, conversation of what I'm about. And I was exploring how conversations can sometimes play out and stuff like that. You guys want to say? The internet would be new confederacies, decentralization of power, an end to the kind of gargantuan and centralist institutions, both state and corporate, that dominate our systems of power currently. I wonder, before we delve into this subject, which I know is extremely significant and important to you, if you might for a moment comment on the current attempts to indict Donald Trump and what he continues to represent for, you might say marginalized people, but he's an incredibly popular and populist figure. Well, I read Victor Davis Hansen's book, The Case for Trump, which I would highly recommend to anyone who's interested in Trump as a phenomenon. And he pointed out, and I think quite rightly, and this is something for those who are sensible on the left to give some consideration to, that the Democrats, especially under Clinton, but it started with Obama, abandoned the American working class, regarded them essentially as deplorables, which is exactly the same thing that happened in Canada under Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh, and they turned to Trump. And it's not as if people don't understand that Trump is a bull in a china shop. And I think Robert F. Kennedy is in some ways the same sort of character, but they're actually calling for a bull in the China shop because increasingly people don't trust the centralized, the overarching centralized institutions that have become too gigantic. You made reference earlier to the fact that there's no necessary reason for us to assume. I guess I'm wondering why would that necessarily mean you want a bull in a China shop because you don't trust the overarching? It's just overcorrecting. Ah, that's like, okay. Because, like, I feel like the majority of people, I'm just generalizing, the majority yeah. of the people don't have, like, the, um, the stabilizing system to not make it overcorrect. So, okay. like, if there's a really centralized institution, um, so, and the natural response to that is, I want someone who's personable and who just speaks his mind and chaotic and it's that yeah. way I can relate to him because he's human. Yeah. He's not this manicured government guy yeah. who speaks in government speak. Right. He <laughs> he insults people on stage. That's right, right. Which is <laughs> I mean, he's entertaining. Yeah, he's so. entertaining. Yeah. He knows what he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He's an entertainer. Yeah, he's entertaining, yeah. And not necessarily like that doesn't necessarily point to like the figure that we need. Yeah. But in the act of overcorrecting, you hit at a balance along the way. Yeah, yeah. You pass that balance yeah, yeah. and you get to like this is where we shouldn't go to. Yeah. So let's find to find to try to bring it back. Yeah. And then we'll find like what we need. So right now we still don't know, or at least I still don't know yeah. if Trump and I guess Robert have Kennedy, I don't know much about him, is like the right correction or I don't really know much about his politics either. I just know he like says some wild shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, uh, there's, a, there's a characteristic of like you don't really know if something is right until you get to the end result. Yeah, that's, a, that's also scary. yeah, that's a feature of even computation where Sometimes, uh, I don't remember what it's called, computational reducibility or something, where sometimes there's certain things where you have to run the computation through the actual activity. You have to actually see the whole unfolding to you know the result, to you know everything that's going on. And lots of things in life are like that. If you think about it, uh, ethical judgments are like that, where you don't know sometimes if something is wrong till you've done it. Mm -hmm. or And then you have a memory of that being wrong, mm -hmm. and then it guides you through further activity. So sometimes that happens. Okay, so... Okay, so it's almost like a pendulum that needs to swing itself to come to a stop. Something like that, yeah. I can see that. And sometimes it's also like um, in the action, there's a measuring that comes with the action. Mm -hmm. Where it's like if you're walking 10 steps, by retracing your steps, you right. get the length of 10. Right, so right. then you can take that metric of like, if I walk for this much for this, this particular period, like you can take that section out of distance and you can use that to measure spaces. You use that to measure time. So you get a metric that covers different dimensions, different right. features. And then you can extend on that method, met metric and refine it and so on. 
just one of those interesting things I noticed about how people take action about their evaluations of stuff. I guess that's why like there's like a cyclical sense of when you read the Bible. It's like it 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 hits on the same themes, but in different means and different characters and yeah. different different variation. Yeah. And um I guess that hits on like you're like people overcorrect, societies overcorrect, nations overcorrect all yeah. the time. Yeah. And it's in the burning of the extreme ends yeah. that steers it into the collective memory of the like, collective human memory. Yeah, like and how we know the Nazis. Like the Bible. Like with the Nazis. Yeah. Like, you know, like uh so that's a like people can point to that and like that's objective evil. Yeah. Let's not do that. Yeah. And we come back around, you know, we get yeah. So mm -hmm. like cars are good when we see certain things are good. Like that's good. Let's have more of that. Let's go on. It's very interesting. That the internet communication system and information exchange system that we've set up would necessarily tilt towards decentralization and universalization. I think that's absolutely true. It's very difficult to stop a political system from becoming tyrannical. That's the Tower of Babel situation, let's say, or degenerating into, into chaos. You know, we've seen that with, with online games. You know, some of those massive online games degenerated into absolute chaos because the rules by which they were constituted turned out not to engender a playable game. And we have no idea if oh the... i think he's using games as a metaphor okay I, I, okay when i was listening to him like you've never played multiple online multi <laughs> <laughs> you <never> played fortnite <laughs> 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 yeah. took me a while. Oh, took you've while. never teabagged someone after a kill <laughs> <laughs> internet communication system we set up is actually a playable game we have no idea like look already we do know some things about 35 percent of internet traffic is pornographic and if you don't think that that's under the control of psychopathic criminals you're a fool and then there's absolute absolute what would you say these things were like like if you don't think this yeah then you're this yeah it's it's what you're talking about how you like he just comes to the conclusion of it yeah. and just says it yeah. as if it's like fact. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. I don't know. It's like. That's because there's an evaluation going on. Yeah. And he has this sense of what should feel like, I guess, common sense. Mm -hmm. Where it's just like, it's common sense that if something is pleasurable, like porn or whatever, there'll be people who exploit that. Mm -hmm. Or there'll be people who generate more to make money or, you know, whatever. Or people who will try to see how far they can go with that. I guess, yeah. Like, when you like extrapolate it out like that, then yeah, you would be a fool not to notice that. Yeah. yeah. So there's that feature there. Mm -hmm. And there's also the feature of like the whole, like, cause even, cause I remember if I remember correctly, I think when the Gutenberg press was invented, the main things that were printed were Bibles and pornography. Really? <laughs> yeah. If I remember correctly. Pornography. Yeah. Cause those are the two main things of human beings, religion and sexuality. We love sex and we love like mystical, spiritual gods and what does and life ritual. mean and how can I get a nut? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's what that's most life. life. That's yeah. life. Life's characterized by different nuts and different like meanings. <laughs> spiritual nut. <laughs> spiritual nut, yeah. Enlightenment nut. <laughs> it's, it's the heavenly nut. The earthly nut. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the the combination of heaven and earth. Yeah. Chaos and order. <laughs> I mean, sometimes some creationists have like the earth is a woman and the sky is a man, or what, or vice versa, and they come together and yeah, they nut. It's like it's like it, it intimates itself as like a cosmic sexual intercourse. Yeah. yeah. Which it has, that idea is also in the Bible too. Like, yeah, apparently male and female and and marriage itself it has a mystery to it, and that's why God used that structure to make uh the idea of the church, the church being the female, the church being the bride, and Jesus being the Adam, Adam. Mm -hmm. And, okay, yeah. so that's why. So okay, I'm not gonna spoil it, but okay, something he touches on that talks about what we just talked. Let's continue. A lawless West activity on the criminal financial fraud front. I don't think there's an older person in the Western world who hasn't who isn't targeted once a week by criminals trying to steal their bank accounts. Yeah, and then so that's direct criminal activity. That, that's that of the obvious type. 
Then there's all the online trolls who do nothing but cause trouble and sow divisiveness in their cowardly manner and their LOL, with their LOL culture, trying to do nothing but cause trouble. And we know from the psychological research that those people are much likely to have dark tetrad characteristics. They're Machiavellian, narcissistic, psychopathic, and because that wasn't good enough, sadistic. Yeah, there's, yeah. And they have we have no control mechanisms for their proliferation online. Yeah. Right in face to face, people like that get shut down right away. But they have absolutely free reign on the net, and I think not only does that. Some of talking. Yeah, it's almost like a, almost like a the philosophical notion of a state of nature. Like so, we have it in the virtual world, where the virtual world, just like the natural world, raw has its predators, has its viruses, has its dual nature of bacteria, where they can be beneficial or harmful depending on how they are like depending on what body they're a part of and so on. So it's like, we're learning, we're basically making a new environment that we don't fully understand because we haven't figured out the rules of how even this environment works and how it's you like, it. it's like the wild, yeah. but in a new substrate, substrate. Yeah. like layer, a yeah, new layer. Yeah. It's so like, we've already mastered the wild in the physical world. Yeah. That's why we got cities and all that and civilization. Yeah. Now we're going into a new frontier of technology, AI, and it's like, it's degenerated to, it's it's a certain serpent that's ate its tail. Yeah. And we've gone back, we've, we've, we've regenerated in a sense, Yeah, but we've added a new layer. So we've actually moved forward, but it's a new level. It's a new game plus. Yeah. We start back at level one, Yeah, but with our previous equipments. Yeah. It's also like um, layers of abstraction in, with software and hardware, where when you have, um, oh, damn, that's crazy. You can go and get a tissue. Let me explain this quite quick, and I'll, I'll pause it. Actually, I can pause it right now. Uh, hold on.